Hello, geometry students. How's it going? Uh, today, we're going to be covering uh, the second activity. It's the activity from Unit 2, Geometry A. So um, if you want, uh, go ahead and open up that assignment, and uh, we'll get right to it. So it should look like this. So it's basically, well, let me share my screen real quick. Okay, okay, cool. So um, what we're gonna talk about in this activity is congruent triangles. So it says in this activity, you will use the GeoGebra geometry tool to explore the relationships among the sides and angles of congruent triangles. So what I want you to do, I want you to go ahead and click on this congruent triangles link and it should open something that looks like this, okay? This is, uh, this is the GeoGebra website or application. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we want to perform the following series of rigid transformations on triangle ABC. So we have this triangle ABC, it's right here, uh, same triangle right here on GeoGebra. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to do these few things to it, okay? We're going to do these um, transformations on here, but also we're going to do them on GeoGebra right here. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, I don't know why it's not letting me right here. Maybe I can use this. No. Oh, no. Well, um, I don't know why it wasn't before. Okay. So we're going to do these transformations here and also on GeoGebra, okay? So that way you can kind of get the hang of how to do it on both ways. Um, but also we need it here because this is part of the answer, but we also need it on GeoGebra because it's going to help us later to measure measuring sides and angles and things, okay? So the first thing, it says, translate triangle ABC by moving five units to the right and two units up. So we're going to take each point of this triangle, and we're going to move them according to this translation. So five units to the right and two up. So let's look at A. So A is currently here. We want to move it five to the right, one, two, three, four, five, and two up. So this is where the A will end up. So we're going to go ahead and label that as A prime. So put a little apostrophe by that, and we call that A prime. We'll do the same thing for B and C as well. So for B, five units right and two up. And we're going to call this point B prime. Similarly with C, uh, five to the right, two up. And I bet you know what this will be called, C prime. Now go ahead and use this tool right here. We're going to use the line segment tool. So that's just like next to the pencil right here. And we're going to connect those points together. So we're going to basically create the image of the triangle that we originally had. So it should just look like this. Um, notice A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime. They look identical. Um, in fact, they should, because all we did is we took the shape and we moved it. Okay? And, um, yeah, so they look identical. We call those types of shapes that have the exact same size, exact same shape. We call them congruent. Okay? So we could say... Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing over here. And here it's a little bit trickier. So on GeoGebra now, um, what I want you to do is we're going to go, and you'll see a bunch of tools on the top bar. I want you to go to this tool, and then you're going to go um, down to Translate by Vector. So you click Translate by Vector. Then what you're going to do is you click the triangle that we're starting with, and we want to move five to the right and two up. So go ahead and click on A. Let's see, that's not working. Um, click on the triangle, and then you can click any um, anywhere. So I'm just going to click right here, maybe at one comma one. And I want to go five to the right. So from one, five to the right would be at six and then two up, so that'd be at three. So you're gonna create this vector here. 
And what that does is it grabs this triangle and it moves it according to this vector. Okay. I don't want the vector on the screen. So if you go back to the arrow tool, you can go and right click that, click that. See where it says show object. We don't want to show object. So we get rid of there. So we're just left with just the image triangle. Notice ABC, triangle ABC, and triangle A prime B prime C prime. It's the same as what we have over here. Okay. Questions on that so far? Well, I guess you can't really ask me questions, but you know, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or uh, or call the center or anything. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is we're going to draw a line x or sorry, y equals negative x. Okay, so we want to draw a line, and it's the line y equals negative x. That's a line that goes diagonally, kind of this way. Okay, so it'll look like this. Start at this corner here. Goes all the way through, through 0, 0, through 1, 1. Oh, I think I missed, I messed that up. I did mess that up. Okay, so that's not the line we want. We want it to go this way, sorry. I apologize. So it'll be like this. And I'm just recording these on my first take. So if there's mistakes, which there will be, um, just forgive me. <laughs> um, and then uh, we'll move on from those mistakes. So then go back to the drawing pencil. And we want to reflect triangle A prime, B prime, C prime across this line. So notice A is on the line. So that means when it reflects across, the reflection will also be on that line. So A prime and the reflection of A prime, we'll call it A prime prime, double prime, are at the same point. B prime is here. When you reflect it across, notice you go to that line and then the same distance away. So the new B, the reflected B, B prime prime will be right here. Notice these had ABC. The first image has primes, and the second image will have prime prime, double prime. Okay, and then if we look at C prime, the fastest way to line is this way, diagonally here. So we're going to go that same distance and in the opposite direction. Okay. And this is where C prime prime will be. Go to the this line segment tool and connect those together. Just like so. And you'll it should look like that. Looks like perhaps like wings or something. Um, okay. So as you can see, these two triangles are also congruent, meaning they have the same size and same shape. Let's go ahead and do that also on GeoGebra. So now go to GeoGebra. And we first want to draw a line the line y equals negative x. So go to this line tool, and we can click 0, 0, and also click uh, 1, comma, negative 1 to create this line. Okay. I don't want these points kind of cluttering up everything, so I don't want to show these objects. I'll show those objects. I will leave f. F is at zero, zero. Okay, that might come in handy later. Okay, um, so now we got our line. We want to reflect triangle A prime, B prime, C prime across that line. So go back up to your tools and you'll see where we had the translation tool. We want to go to the reflect about line. So that's the tool you want, reflect about line. So you're going to go and click uh, this triangle a prime, B prime, C prime. Then click the line we just made. And just like that, we've created this new image. Notice it also has the double primes. A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. Okay. Next, we want to rotate this new triangle that we have. We want to rotate it counterclockwise about the origin by 270 degrees. So we're actually going to do this on GeoGebra first. So let's go ahead and rotate the triangle counterclockwise about the origin 270 degrees. The origin is 0, 0, by the way. So we want to rotate this new triangle that we just got 
we want to rotate it 270 degrees. Okay, so go back up to your tools and the same, the same little space here, click on that, and we're going to rotate about point. That's what you want, rotate about point. Go ahead and click the triangle, A prime, A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, then click zero, zero, or point F. That. We want counterclockwise, so that's good. Don't click clockwise. And we want 270 degrees. Okay. All right, and so that gives us this new triangle. Okay, notice this one has triple prime. A triple prime, B triple prime, three C triple prime. Okay. Cool. Now let's take a look at the coordinate points. So A triple prime is at one comma one. So when we do it on here, we want to put go to our pencil. We're gonna have a point at one comma one, and that's where A prime 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 is triple prime. We're going to do the same thing with B. So B is at negative 2, negative 1. So negative 2, negative 1. That's where B prime 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 is. And C triple prime is at negative 4, 0. Negative 4, 0. OK. And this is C triple prime. Go ahead and go to the line segment tool right here, connect those points, and we'll create the last triangle that we need. Great. So now we have a total of four triangles. We have our original triangle. We have the triangle uh, that it translated to, A prime, B prime, C prime. Then we reflected it to get this triangle. Then we rotated that 270 degrees to get this triangle. Now, if we look at all these triangles, you might notice they're all the same shape, all the same size, just in different orientations, facing different ways or are in a slightly different spot, but they're all identical to each other. They're all congruent, okay? So now the next part, part B, this is why we have the GeoGebra, because on, on this, we can't really measure angles from this one, okay? but we can from GeoGebra. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to GeoGebra and let's go ahead and look at our original triangle, triangle ABC, and we wanna measure some angles. So on the top toolbar, go to this one right here, okay? And we want, click the first one, angle, okay? So, the way we're going to measure angles. So if I want to measure this angle, we're going to go ahead and click this side and this side. And it gives you the angle measure. We're going to do the same thing. Click this side and then this side. Then same thing. Click this side, then this side. So you can see we have our three angles. We have angle A is 22.38. Angle B, it's kind of hard to see, but I can move this other way. Okay. Angle B it oh, our angle c i should say is 37.87 and then angle b is 119.74 okay so on our on our uh we want to put these numbers into this right here okay i'm going to leave that up to you to do okay so you need to put those angle measures right here for angle A, B, for these ones here. Now, which one goes where? Well, you see how it says angle A, B, C? That's actually angle B. So you kind of go off what the middle, the middle one is. So that's angle B. Um, so that one would be 119.74. I'll leave it up to you to fill in the rest. Okay. Now we're also going to um, look at this one here. So we're going to look at triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, and do the same thing. So that's this triangle right here. So again, go to this tool right here, angle tool. We're going to click this line, then this line. We're going to click this line, then this line. 
we're going to click this line, then this line. I want you to notice that the angle measures are the same as the original pre-image that we had earlier. The angle measures from this one is the same as the angle measures from this one. Okay. Also, um, I want you to keep in mind, um, if you accidentally, what can happen pretty easily is if you click angle and you click the two lines in the opposite way, it'll give you this exterior angle. Uh, we don't want that. So if that happens, just click undo and then click the lines in the other order. Okay, it should give you that. Okay, so um, that's that. And it should be the same for these, for these other triangles as well. So when you get all those angle measures, just go ahead and fill in this chart for part B, okay? They should match all the way across, okay? Now, part C, measure the lengths of sides for triangle ABC and it's three images. Okay, same idea. So, but this time we're measuring side lengths. So what's this, what's this length here? What's this length here? What's this length here? So go to our toolbar again. So where, where we had the angle tool, go ahead and do distance or length. That's what we're looking for here, distance or length. Just go and click that. And then you click the sides and it gives you the distances. Okay, so side AB, this side AB is 3.61. So on our answer, we want to put that. BC, BC is 2.24. Notice BC connects B and C, so that's how we know it's BC. And then AC is 5.1. We're going to do the same for the other triangles. So let's go ahead and look at A prime, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And by the way, if I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video. You could rewind and all that too. So, um, so go ahead and click this one, distance or length. And you can click these side lengths and it gives you this. Notice that these side lengths have the same as the original image, the pre-image is side length. So the image and the pre-image have the same side lengths. Which makes sense, because remember, these triangles should be congruent, meaning they have the exact same size and the exact same shape. Okay, let's go ahead and fill out the rest of this. Um, again, these should match all the way across. Okay. Um, so here, how do the measures of the sides of the sides and angles for triangle ABC compare with the corresponding measures in the three images? Well, um, you could say something along the lines of all of the angle measures and side lengths are equal. Simple as that. OK. Part E, translations, rotations, and reflections are all what we call rigid transformations. Okay. So everything we've done, when we move the triangle, we rotated it, we reflected it, those are all rigid transformations. What can you conclude about the measures of sides and angles on any triangle after undergoing a series of rigid transformations? Um, Say rigid transformations um, do not alter the size or shape of the triangles. Um, the images and pre images. The images and pre-image are good. Something simple like that. 
you don't have to use this exact sentence. Um, you know, you can put it in your own words. I'd actually prefer to put it in your own words. But, uh, you know, if you're having trouble, there's that. Okay, part F. By definition, two shapes are congruent if you can map one onto the other using rigid transformations. Okay. Since any sequence of rigid transformation transformations performed on a triangle results in a congruent triangle, what does that imply about the con corresponding side lengths and angle measures of two concurrent triangles? So I'll let you answer this one on your own. But as you can see, as you probably can guess, for any type of any two congruent shapes, um, any two congruent triangles or any other shape, um, if they're congruent, they will have all the same angle measures as well as all the same side lengths. So you can go ahead and put something along those lines there. If two triangles have three corresponding angles and three corresponding sides are equal in measure, are the two triangles necessarily congruent? Yes. So if we look at two triangles and we see, oh, all their angles match. Oh, all their side lengths match. Then we can conclude that, yes, the two triangles question be congruent um, this is because they have the same size as well as the same shape same shape the capital T on the and that's it um, so if you have any questions or it still is not making sense, you can't figure out how to do something, um, I want you to go ahead and you can email me or you can call the center. Okay. Um, and we can schedule an appointment for me to meet with you. We can go over this assignment. Okay. But hopefully that was enough to at least get you started. All right. So anyway, um, good luck with that. And I hope you were able to get through the assignment, and I will see you next time with the uh, unit three. Okay, take care. Let's see, stop recording.